You got one returning from uh, video port, over. Go ahead, director. I brought a sort of weapon to school. Because you told my mom. I got kicked out of every school in British Columbia for two years. I hung myself with phone charge. I wasn't allowed to attend any school. And I was dead. And he found me. And he brought me back to life. <laughs> I was selling crack heroin, uh, meth, and coke, and meat, and whatever. I think my dad is a prick, and he needs to get shot in the feet. Don't touch me! Can you sit down, please? My fucking feet in there, bitch. And fuck you! I was like, why can't I look at the window? Everybody's just stressed right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. I was like, If it wasn't for this place, I probably wouldn't be alive. Just because I've done some really fucked up shit on the edge. I'm kind of glad I'm in here right now. I know for a fact that if I stayed out and I never got caught for what we did, I wouldn't, I don't know, I wouldn't have any remorse for anything, I guess, I don't know. I wish I could be out. I don't even remember what it feels like to be out anymore. What if the justice system really saw the people that you you really are? Not what you're being charged with, but the person you are. Kids. Kids in jail. Those two words seem like they don't even belong in the same sentence. I've been volunteering to visit these kids for the past few years and created a film program. Do you know how to do that or what? <laughs> well, you're, you're hard on me. I've been teaching them about filmmaking and other life skills, listening to them, and helping them tell their own stories. Science, um, textiles, planning, and... Mr. Van Lu comes in and... Uh... My wife, actor Babs Chula, comes out to support the program. <laughs> She's helping the kids find their own voice through storytelling. So look, the, so the story is kind of like what we talked about, except that we're adding Lonely Girl into the story. Are we supposed to get up? When you're ready, yeah. When you're ready, just get up. You don't have to sit up. You can, you can stay on the yoga mat. You can... You can you can sit back on a chair, however you want to do it. <laughs> remember that there are people Actually, still in the forest, dudes. Hey, yo, remember there are people that are still there. Just be respectful of people who aren't coming up yet. Okay? Like when I was young, I used to really love to build like forts and stuff, right? Like little forts in my room. So I had a pretty big room, right? And then I guess, I don't know how we did it, but we made a fort out of like a bunch of like... Blanket. Like blankets and stuff, yeah, but like, I don't know how we did it, like I'm trying to think, like, I think we used like chairs, chairs. and like yeah. other stuff, and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, like, I, I, I think my dresser too, yeah, okay, that's it, okay, I have a dresser over here and another thing over here, and like, I pulled the drawer, I put the one blanket in there, right? I'm not that depressed anymore. When I first got here, I was like really depressed and bored all the time. Now I'm just bored. Did you get a black eye? Yeah. Did you, did you bump into something? Uh, my fist. <laughs> <laughs> you bumped into your own fist. Yeah. Uh huh. That happens when you get angry. I had I had an issue that I had to sort out with myself, and it resulted in getting punched. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, how was your week? How was my week? Yeah, how was the week for you? Hurting. Oh, was that? Why is that? <laughs> I got D stage, and my room changed, and I got uh, assessment got points, and a two-hour lockup. Two hour early bed. Yeah, two hour early bed. What was going on? I got caught with a picture. 
Where well, did you get the picture? From him. Oh, oh, I see. He gave you a picture. It appeared. And that's what? Yeah, but oh. I still have four more of them. Well, that seems a little hard. Because <laughs> I'm not allowed to have them. See, and I hide them like this. See that handsome man over there? It was so weird, right? Because I never knew him, but like I always used, like I used to have like the harsh shots for him when I was younger. <laughs> I did, and he'd always laugh at me when I came back. <laughs> How do you meet in jail and like fall in love with somebody? I saw her, right, just walking up the stairs, and she was like, oh, hey, right? and she's just smiling and stuff. I'm like, what the hell, you're back, right? Like. We did a duet together, right? At one of those Christmas concerts. It was so awkward. We were like harshly like, trying to like um, think of ways to move in the song. I couldn't touch his hand. I was like, no, I couldn't do it. I was so shy to do it. I was like, oh my god, right? And then on top of that, he was being a little geek. Come on, he was oh, he's being funny. I don't know, she was just looking at me and stuff. I was looking at her and wanted to kiss her so badly, right? Those bluish green eyes, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, and no. Uh... When I was a little girl, I was having a really bad nightmare. And I woke up from a dream, and I remember going across to my mom's room. And my stepdad got, my stepdad got really angry, and, um, my mom crawled up with me, and while I was crawled up in bed with her, my dad turned around and kicked in the face. That's what I was thinking. And I remember telling him to stop and stuff like that, and he finally took my arm and just threw me down the stairs. He didn't like me because I was a female. Same with my real dad. Um, my mom was always drunk, and she was never home, and she, when she worked, it was drug dealing, and. They were harsh and uh, heroin and stuff like that, and and I'd have to go to the store and steal from them. But then eventually they figured it out, and the people at the store would give me food to take home. I got higher connections than my mom. Eventually, I was 14 years old and I had 10 grand in my pocket. 10 grand that was mine. I had 20 grand altogether. I doubled my profit all the time. It's mine. It's not theirs. It was mine. Nobody owned me. I never let anybody own me. I learned that. I'll show you my crib, you know? Yeah, you want to see yeah. my crib? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, these are the stairs, you know, headed to my room, you know? You know? We're just really messy, you know? This is where... Uh, Dad was really strict. We got by, right? He worked his ass off, and um, we lived... We had food at the table every day, right? It was, it was good, right? Like, we... Every Sunday, we'd go to church. After church, he'd cook us a good meal and stuff, right? Like, Where was your mom? Uh, she was out of the picture. Out of the picture? Yeah. What happened to her? She just bounced. Yeah. Yeah. And you've never heard from her since? I've talked to her a couple of times since. But I was like, last time I talked to her, I was 10. Yeah. One night or whatever, I came to see my mom, and she was really down sick. And uh, I came to give her some money, and she took my dope. And I said, what are you doing? I said, here, you want some? Like, she wanted some dope, so I took it out, and I gave her some, right? And she, I was like, give me my fucking dope back. She's like, I'm not giving you your fucking dope back. She's like, this is my fucking dope. I said, no, it's not. I said, that's my dope. That's how I make my money. She's like, I don't care. And she hard started smoking my dope in front of me, and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, you're going to take this over me? I was like, give me back my fucking dope. And then I basically asked her, I was like, what do you want? You want that or me? And she took the dope. And I walked out. I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> That's nasty. You're going to get disease. Sorry. I want 
in my life, and I know the only way I can have him in my life is if I change a few things. And if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be in the headspace I'm in either, because he made me realize a lot. Throughout like the whole time we've been going out, he's like encouraged me to do good, and like he's like made me realize that like I'm better than what I was doing, and um, he kind of like brought me back because before I came in here, I like. I know, I was just like, I was harsh of lost when I came in here and he helped me out, right? Like. Come on, Larry, play. You'd like a normal life? Real life. And real people. A normal life, what I mean is a life that. Has a job and you have a legit house and you're not gonna have cops come and break it down and you can buy things and actually keep it. Are you playing? You wanna yes. play? Yeah, it's not hoping I'm going to. And then there's before policy, right? You were co-ed, right? Yeah. yeah. You okay. School, you could do it in a sports program. In school. Alone. Oh, can you find a place to be alone? No. Well, no. <laughs> ne uh. <laughs> Never. We used to be able to mix. They saw that mean, you know, we're really close and stuff, right? They didn't want that. Then a policy comes out a week later saying that no girls and boy mixing, period. To talk to somebody with the policy, you don't talk face to face anymore. You talk through windows and you see each other through doors. Are you doing your chores? Yeah, fuck. I'm checking out. This is the only way we might go and communicate. So she's over there right now because it's bad staff, right? We usually talk through windows. We can read each other's lips pretty good. We can't have like fully conversations, but we'll have some conversations, you know? And um, where we can read each other's lips and stuff, right? They're fun. And like, you have to play together together. One, four, three. So, yeah. what's it mean? I love you. Oh, I that's what I want to ask. Love mm -hmm. you. you. Whenever I feel down or something, I feel like I can talk to him. He guides me through it. And I love it. I got a letter. Huh. I'm yours and I know you're mine. We chose our fate and now our destiny's entwined. Remember, bro, this is still just a start. Together, I'll always look that through us apart. Well, I love you, bro, and you know what's coming up. We're locked away with prison bars holding us back. Our love is being tested because they're trying to make us part, but yet we're holding on strong. The story that 
we want to tell here. What? No, but like, what do you want? Like, there could be so many things that you can make something up in here. You can make something of a kid fighting. You can make something of a kid's death. You can make a, a thing of a relationship in here. Uh, you can make. <gasps> that's a good idea. That's a great <gasps> oh idea. Oh my god, she's so smart. Okay, that's the story. Do you guys that's know the story of Romeo yes. and Juliet? I don't. Not really. You don't. No, I haven't. Never, I've, I know, um, like, it's weird. You've heard of it. I've heard of it, but I've never you read it, or, it is. or watched a movie about it. Uh, For relationship in jail. Yeah, yeah. but also that, something that, else. It's like, a relationship. What makes it really and interesting. And how, how it makes it hard for that person and the people around it. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Well, and we, we could call it Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> Does the relationship that these two kids have make other people on the unit feel like they want a relationship too? But he, I'm not saying the story is about you, yeah. but seeing her makes me want to have a boyfriend so bad. Me seeing people in a relationship in here makes me not want to have a relationship at all. Frustrated? Yeah. By seeing it from level one, experience? Level one, level one. So why does it sound like Mr. Um, you know how I feel? It's the fact it always has to be about them, right? Okay. No offense. Happy for Not them, but girlfriends always they just turn on you, man. And they want to put you down, they'll do it. It, it doesn't matter, you know what I mean? Yeah. Why would you throw shit at? Me? Because you're fucking being a bitch. I'm not being a bitch. Yeah, you, were, you don't even take a fucking son. joke. All you do is fucking be angry. Well, all just two seconds ago when you were in the corridor, when we were coming down from here, you told me not to talk to you. So all of a sudden you're joking around with me? It was a joke. In the corner when we were coming down from Kelly, just, just drop it. Telling me that just drop it. Just me. drop it. Quit making a scene. Just drop it. So I what? So it's just my fault that it happened that way? Well, no, seriously, no, no. because it's driving me crazy. It's me, man. I didn't ask for any of it. And you drive me crazy all the time. Why? Because it happens to be my way all the time when I don't ask for it? It's not about asking. Then speak up, man. It's about your entitlement that you think that you have. I don't think I have an entitlement. You, you give it to me. You push your way to the front all the time. You give it to me. Are you like seeing how I feel? Well, then don't fucking do it. No one is asking you to. Why the fuck did I even want to do it? Exactly. You think you haven't wanted to do it. You don't want to kiss it. Don't do it. Why do I want to show that? You so, how are we going to resolve this? saw a friend I, I see at school, right? So you, you, we never chilled, so I was like, hey, let's just kick it, right? Like, together and stuff, right? So we're just chilling and stuff, and just decided to jump. People, right? Like, we were just saying, it's angry, right? Like, I was really out of control, that's what I mean, right? Angry and stuff, and, uh, yeah, just killed two people back to back, right? Days and stuff. I came in here for, you know, killing two people, two innocent people did nothing to me. They didn't even look at me wrong or anything. I just felt like doing it, all right? How long ago was that? When I was 15. Three years ago. Yeah. Thought about it every day. What if I did this, you know? What if I did that, right? If I was in there, you know? Like, what if, you know? Like, if you could change it. The past, you would. The only thing I'd want to change is just bringing those lives back, right? Honestly, that's like the only thing, right? Not about me being free, just, just getting those lives back. That's it. But you didn't explain why you came in here this last time. Um, because I ran over a cop. No, I woke up in the morning and um, I was at a crack shack and I didn't want to be around a whole bunch of people because they kept asking me over and over and over and I like wasn't even awake and I was just like really bitchy and I decided to leave. Like I wasn't worried, I was getting high, whatever, do do do, and um, a cop came behind me and the guy who owned the car supposedly was like, oh my god, fuck god, this cop's talking to do do do, right? 
And um, I'm like, why are you worried? I was like, this is your fucking car, right? I turn around and he's like, harsh, like sweating now. I'm like, this isn't your fucking car. I think this is fucking bullshit. I fucking snapped. I harsh locked the fucking doors. I was pulling up into a light and I had the cop car behind me. I didn't know that this was an undercover car right beside me and there's an undercover car right in front of me. While I had a gun to my fucking head and shit, I'm beating this fucking guy up. I have a long fucking ass crack pipe and I was fucking whipping him with it. I noticed a fucking cop that I did not like um, for reasons of that he broke my ribs for no reason when I was younger and I'm serious for no reason and he's robbed me for five grand and he's kicked my face into dirt and just left me there and took my money. He was in the spot where I had to leave anyways and I probably wouldn't have went if it was like if it was a cop or whatever that like you know what I mean but like it was him, so I didn't give a fuck. And I ran him over, and I paralyzed him from the waist down. And he was paralyzed for life. So what did you learn from the crime? I don't know how to answer that, right? Like, it's so hard because no one ever asks you that shit, right? Like, right. they just ask, well, what happened, you know? That's yeah. it. You don't, right. They don't ask you, what did you learn from it, right? Like, it's a little freaking poster I made. Wow. Yeah, just trying to, a lot of anger in there. I was needed to hurt people. To me, that was the only thing that made me feel, you know, like, how I did, right? Like, full of adrenaline made me feel alive and stuff, you know? I don't like rats. I've never been a rat, and um, I don't associate with them. And it was all by, like, chance, man. That I was at a gas station, and there was this guy there, and he ratted me out. And I was like, no fucking way. I called my buddy up and told him he was here. And um, I pulled the papers out because I had the papers on him for ratting me out. And I put that in his face and I said, would you like to tell me about this? And he's looking at me and he starts bawling. I didn't mean it. I was like, you, I fucking did jail time for you, you fucking goof. And I fucking cut his tongue off and his fingers. I kept having a dream over and over, and I just couldn't get the picture out of my head of someone screaming. That was the dream of um, when I was torturing somebody, and they kept asking me why. So um, I drew it. Did drawing it uh, change anything for you? Yeah, I stopped dreaming about it. I don't really feel remorse for that because I was raised as in if you do something like that, that's what you get. I remember when my mom fucked up when I was harsh and little, my brother doesn't even remember it, but I hid underneath the staircase and I was holding my brother and covering his eyes while people beat my mom and dad nearly to death because of a drug deal gone bad. So to me, that's normal. And I know that's not supposed to be normal, but that's just, like, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta be careful what you do out in the game. Like, it is a game. It's not life, it's a game that you have to play every fucking day. And if you slip, you fuck up. And you get, and you pay the consequences for it. That's just how it is. Like, there's a big difference between in life of being a Bonnie and Clyde and being a Romeo and Juliet. One returning Emerald, please. Some people think it's all easy to have your boyfriend in here. It's not. Like, I haven't even been able to cuddle with him or touch him or worry about kissing him without getting in trouble. It's exhausting. It's emotional. It's like, it fucks with your head. The windows get to you, you know, like, 
just one window, one door blocking you, you know? Yeah, it sucks, but I don't know. We'll be out soon. My drug days are over now, so gotta, you know, practice what I preached, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so. yeah. She, she's doing okay? She's doing good? Yeah, she is. She's stronger than she thinks. Yeah. She is. She's, uh, she's something else, I think. He's so fucking stubborn, Larry, man. I harshly... Didn't he tell you what happened? What happened? Oh, fuck. Man. I harshly dumped him, man. Told him that I needed a break to think about stuff. And then, uh... I know, like, it's big major stuff, so, like, it's stuff that, like, I'm not gonna mention. Because, uh, yeah, I can't mention it. And then, uh... I told him, I was like, don't make me fucking push you away, right? Any more than I had to. And then, uh... And that off for a second, and I'll tell you what happened. Diamond tells me events beyond her control are forcing her to return to the drug trade when she gets out. She's worried that Phoenix will get caught up in the game. Fucked up, yeah. eh? I never put myself in that position. I just can fix it. And I know I can. It's easy, it's simple. I told you I used to make lots of money, man. You can sell drugs anywhere. You just have to know the right people, right? Easy. It's simple. It's quick. One drug transaction, you can make fucking thousands of dollars. I know, it's like everything that I've worked for and like everything that's like perfectly set up for me is like basically like it's gonna get turned into one big fucking cover. Are you okay? I don't know what I am yet. I don't know what I mean. I've been so fucking lost. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. He's been like upset for like the past week or whatever because I won't even look at him and it's because uh, that, what did you say? The, your eyes are like windows to your soul? Yeah, and that's the reason why I won't look at him is because I know that he knows what I'm feeling and I don't like that, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to hide a few things, and it's, like, not working. He's making it so much worse, he doesn't even understand. He's like, so you think I'm just going to let you go? He's like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> He's like, I'm staying right here. He's like, I'm not leaving you. Right? And, like, oh, my God, that just, like, makes him even more perfect. She was trying to protect me from the life that she chose to live. I'm not in that life because I chose not to, right? That's the difference between me and her. I, I learned from what I did, right? Mm -hmm. Fell down and got right back up, right? I'm not going to sit around and just talk about it and feel sorry for myself. But what really, like, you know, makes two people different, you know? It's like how you deal with it, right, you know? You could sit around, you know, in jail, talking about, like, all the shit you've been through, you know? You feel sorry for yourself, you know? Like, talk about it, you know? Like, and not do anything about it, right? Or you can talk about it and do something about it, you know? And that's what I did, right? He says he has changed for the better and has learned patience and empathy. And if you want to do something, do it. And don't let anybody tell you different. Because with dedication, hard work, and stress, people can accomplish anything they put their mind to.
This is the longest road I've ever walked, and I'm happy that I finally reached that mark in my life. You try to go to like plumbing companies, try to get taken in as an apprentice, you know? Yeah. Try to get some experience. So. Fuck, I'm on a roll right now, you know? I got. This is it, right? Like, just give me this chance and, you know? I'm done, right? Like, honestly, we will not fuck up again. <laughs> I won't, man. Like, it's impossible. You can't do this much time and not. and want to come back to jail, you know? Yeah, man, I'm done with this fucking place. Either way, I'm done with this fucking place, right? Yeah. These are all songs. There we go, this is it right here. I made a song. I thought it'd go good with this, this movie because it's kind of like, I don't know. song almost, you know, so, yeah. And I remember seeing for the first time, girl, you was just looking so damn fine, girl. And I was thought about her, legs, thought I'd write a song, right? Face, it all started with that one sentence that, that uh, I remember seeing for the first time, girl, right? And then I liked that, right? And then I started working upon that, and then I, I just made the whole song here. I'll do anything to make you happy, girl. I'll do anything you want just to see you smile, girl. And baby girl, I need your loyalty and your trust. Stay faithful, girl, cause I know that it's gonna help us. I know that me and you belong together. She's got them bluish green eyes. It makes me smile when I see her. Every day I'll never get tired of looking at you. It's the first time a song's been made for me, but it's the first time I've ever heard someone sing it to me. You know what I mean? So when I heard this song this morning and I cried, it was because. Oh. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, that was me.
each other for sure I'd say, yeah we'll see each other I'll be calling her we'll talk to each other and stuff 13 and a half months so we'll be out it sounds good right now really. it'll sound better when I got like two months left but right now it's still a long time for me so thankful to be here because like jail has always been the place where I have felt safe ever since I was 13 years old this has always been my comfort zone nobody's ever messed with me are you afraid of being up? sure yeah what do you think is the scariest of getting up? Fail. Got a whole bunch of people out there, and they're expecting you to be this. If you fuck up, they're just gonna hurt. <laughs> then I'm gonna have no more options. Then I'm just gonna be some criminal the rest of my life. Bye, baby. Have a good luck, eh? Thank you. myself as a criminal. Like the only thing that I've done in the criminalized way is sell drugs and fucking have guns on me and run over a cop. And just selling drugs and holding a weapon is all over survival. Which one are we in? It's normal. For some kids, it's normal and that's how they grow up. Once a kid gets out of jail, they're not allowed contact with anyone in the institution. Yeah. Not here for like, it sucks. Phoenix knows this, but attempts to contact Diamond anyway. Try to get a hold of her. I'll try. A few weeks later, Phoenix finally reaches Diamond by phone. During that time, she was smoking a lot of weed and stuff, right? 
once I heard she was selling weed, I just knew that she was fucking up. I knew she was gonna fuck up again. Like, deep down, I knew, I was like, fuck. That's why I told her, you know, you're gonna, it's gonna escalate. She's like, no, 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 it isn't. <sighs> and it did escalate, right? It did. Yeah, so. And now I heard she's an adult now, so. New charges. I loved her, right? Like, I still do, right? But I, I know it can't work out. I was sad and I was kind of heartbroken and stuff that she had to, you know, get it out like that, go down like that, but it's her life, right? I don't regret anything that's happened between me. She taught me a lot of things, you know? You know, like, really made me, like, think about life a lot, you know? Like, life's too short to be angry all the time, you know? Yeah, so... To be honest, we weren't really much different. And the difference was, was that she just decided to keep on going with it. She's good at making money like that, right? She's like, well, I'm good at it, right? I'm good at hurting people too, right? But. Where's that gonna get me, right? <laughs> like, fuck. Where's that gonna get you, right? I wish I said that to her. I really do. Love blinds you, I guess. <laughs> Just sweet smile, girl. That just drives me so wild, girl. I'm missing you. I need you more and more. Oh, girl, when I'm around you, I just start to get shaken. All the boys you've been with, all of them are all just so fake. Baby girl, need you by my side. Baby, I need you down the ride. That will be the sacrifice we need to fly together. Just drives me so wild, girl. I'm missing you. I need. 